Hey, this is Ashley, and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic, and I'm here for my first weekly wrap-up, and there's a lot of stuff to go over, so we're going to be talking some G Friends, some Astro, some Hedda, some JB, and more, but I'm really excited about this week. This week was a really great week, but it's also the first week that I'm doing this weekly wrap-up, and I hope that it works out well. Obviously, things will be going and changing slightly, so if there's things that you think you might like to see differently, make sure you let me know in the comments down below, and we'll see if we can go ahead and make that happen. First thing that I want to mention are a couple of tracks that were not tied to album releases, and those are going to be Dreamcatchers Over the Sky. Dreamcatcher released this track. It was mainly for their second anniversary. They did the same thing last year where they released a track. It was not a single. They didn't promote. They just released an anniversary track on their anniversary. So they did it their first year anniversary, and they did it again this year with Over the Sky. And I've got to say, Over the Sky is definitely an homage to what Dreamcatcher stands for. Dreamcatcher is a tough group. And they're really, really amazing at what they do. They know how to perform, like, for real. Dami can get it. I noticed that in their last release, their sound was a little bit different than what Dreamcatcher typically does. And it was a little bit more R&B, a little bit more poppy than they had done previously. And I have to admit, they did it really well, and I actually kind of liked it, but it's very different from the signature Dreamcatcher sound, which is very much a rock sound. Over the Sky is back to the basics. But another track that was not tied to an actual album is JB's release. It's called Be With You. It is part of an OST. It is for what seems to be a um, an animation. It looks really interesting. I actually kind of want to check it out now because watching the little bits in the story that were in the video made me feel for these characters and I really just want to check it out and make sure that they're all okay or they're not okay and what's going on. But in typical JB fashion, his voice is amazing. He delivered. Ah, JB's voice is just, yes. It works out so lovely, like always. This song is definitely more along the poppy lines, but it still has very, very JB sounds to it. It's smooth and it's his voice just rolls with everything. And I mean, listen, it's it's JB. And what more can I say? Like he just he's amazing and he continues to surprise me with the things that he puts out and I'm glad that he's getting to do this OST. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is G Friend. They released a full album Sunrise and I will admit I haven't listened to the full album yet and I'm not sure that I will. I haven't actually, I think except except for one G Friend album, I haven't listened to a full album. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. But I did watch Sunrise, watch and listen to Sunrise a few times to really get a feel for it. And it definitely felt like G-Friend. It was a winter feel G-Friend. It sounded like G-Friend. And while I do like G-Friend, I've kind of started to notice that they have this sound that it's not just this particular sound that I associate with G-Friend now. But it's almost feeling like the beat that goes with it is very similar. And I'm sure that they aren't, and I haven't listened to the song side by side. And it could just be a sign that they're really good at sticking with their brand of what is a G-Friend sound amongst this pop landscape. But it almost is starting to feel a little bit repetitive to me. And while, yes, this feels like a winter feel G-Friend rather than like a spring and summertime G friend, which is a little bit brighter. This song is a little bit darker. It has a little bit more of a sultry sound to it. I'm still not sure that I'm really loving. I just kind of want a little bit more out of the G friend sound, if you know what I mean. I want something different. So if they are giving something different that doesn't just sound like this 
G friend sound on their B-sides, please let me know, recommend a track or two, and I will go ahead and check it out. But right now, I just feel like the their main title tracks are starting to sound really, really similar. Next up is Hyera with Ya. And we're just going to take a second and acknowledge the fact that until this moment, I didn't pay much attention to Min Hyuk. So in case you don't know, Hyera is the name that B2B Min Hyuk is using to promote. Now, when I first turned this on, I had very low expectations. This is largely because I just didn't pay attention to Min Hyuk. I didn't. I am I will fully admit it. He is probably the one that faded into the back the most for me within B2B. Sorry, it's just the way it is. But when this started, it hit me hard because what he came with was this smooth hip hop track that had a lot of R&B elements. It was really smooth. A smooth song will get me every time. And it was so entertaining just to listen to Min Hyuk go at it. And then on top of that, he looked like this. And I was just like, um, what? I mean, like I said, I was never paying attention to Min Hyuk, so him popping up like this, hitting me with this smooth track and looking like a god, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. But he's caught my attention. This track is amazing. I really, really enjoy it. I do plan on checking out the full album. I just haven't had the time to do it just yet. Um, but let me know what is your favorite track from that album. And did you, were you were you that surprised? Because I did not see the dance break coming. What, what, where, where did that even come from? I don't even, I don't, I don't know, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. Next, I'm going to speak briefly about Addie's Say My Name. Okay, so a few months ago when Addie's debuted, I was just like, okay, I like this Addie's. They instantly caught my attention and I noticed very quickly that they were a group of guys that could dance, that had talent, and I'm really curious to see what they were going to have to do. So they come back with Say My Name, and Say My Name hit me hard. Say My Name is a great track. It is really entertaining. A lot is going on. They're really able to showcase just how talented they are, which they really are. They are super talented, and I'm really already feeling like this pride to them. I don't know where they're going to end up stacking up in the grand scheme of things, but I feel like if they continue down this trajectory, they're going to raise in my ranks. I'm already at the point where I want to go ahead and check out more things from them. I also want to mention that I did listen to the whole album and there are some great tracks on the album, but I will say that the album shows that there are still some things that can be worked on. One thing that is amazing is that I'm seeing that Addies are champions. They don't present themselves like rookies. They are just amazing. But when it comes to the full album, what I am seeing is that while they have a lot of cohesion and they have this sound that they seem to have already kind of established and are already kind of playing with different things within that kind of scope, the one thing that I am noticing is that not all of the things are quite as strong. I, there were a few songs on that album that I didn't love, but overall, the fact that it is a second album and they're doing so well, I'm proud but not least, never, is Astro. Astro dropped their first full album. Everything else before this has either been a single or a mini album. This is their first full album. And guys, I'm so happy. So the album is called All Light, and the title track was All Night. All Night comes in and hits you with this amazing R&B track. This is something that I've been seeing Astro work towards with their title tracks over the past few years. So you started to see little elements um, from previous songs and it started to really start to manifest in Crazy Sexy Cool. 
And then since then, it has been growing a little bit and a little bit more. And then now we have All Night, which I wouldn't classify it as anything but R&B. It is amazing track. They really, really pulled it off well. And it sounds absolutely amazing. MJ is... MJ! He's amazing. Jinjin hit it with his rap verses really hard. Which I expect from Jinjin at this point. But really, all together, all the guys came together. And this, it just works. This R&B sound works amazing with Astro. Their voices are well-tuned to it. They have this style that just really works for them so well. And All Light, the album as a whole, is an amazing album. However, what I noticed with this album is there's this kind of divide. There are the songs like All Night and Moonwalk and Role Play that really hit this R&B sound really amazing. They sound mature. They sound amazing. The guys really deliver and everything just kind of coalesces to this, um, this, this bundle of just joy that makes me so happy. And then you have other tracks, which happened, I noticed, later in the album where you get more of the poppy light sound that you expect from older Astro. Granted, even these tracks that are more poppy and light, they do have some elements of that R&B that you're seeing shine through in like the other tracks that really just go in and revel in it. But you do get this other lightness to some of those other tracks. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there's... It's, it's a stark change when you go from a song that's so as amazing as Moonwalk and then you go to a much lighter sounding song. And it's a little bit of, it's a little bit jarring when you listen to it all together. They did really well by putting more of the R&B heavy songs that really focus more and are a little bit darker and more mature in the beginning and then transitioning to the lighter stuff later in the album. But I'm really curious to see where their albums will go on a whole moving forward if we start to see less and less of that lighter sound as they become more comfortable with the idea that they don't have to do that unless they really want to. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. Those songs are still enjoyable. I just happen to have a preference after seeing how amazing some of these more R&B heavy songs are to really focus and like those. But those are my thoughts on the different things that came out this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.